Today, we're talking about how to make killer, realistic mock-ups. Making high quality mock-ups is super important, whether you're a clothing brand or a print shop, and it's not something that you wanna cut corners with. If you're a clothing brand, it kinda lets you test and tune your designs and ideas before sending them off to your print shop. And of course, if you're a print shop, it allows you to send off a mock-up to your client beforehand so that they can check it out, sign off on it. That way they know exactly what they're gonna get and you and your crew know exactly what you're gonna make. And because these type of mock-ups are so high quality and so close to the real thing, they can have a whole bunch of other valuable uses too, like using them as social media posts to kinda gauge interest in a design before actually making it. You can use them as product photos on your website in a pinch. It's crazy how many uses these things actually have. So without any more delay, let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna do is go to a website called creativemarket.com. And I've also linked all the stuff we're using today in the description below to just make it way easier for you. But if you're not using my link and going there the long way, then just go up to the top search bar and type t-shirt. You'll see t-shirt mock-up design, t-shirt mock-up bundle, all kinds of stuff pop up right away. And now you can see we've got all kinds of different t-shirt mock-ups to choose from. And yes, this does require a little bit of an upfront investment, but it is very cheap, very worth it. It will pay for itself within the first hour that you own it, I will guarantee you that. I've been doing this for a very long time, and I'm gonna tell you right now that trying to make these type of templates on your own, it just isn't worth it, man. I know how to make these things very well, and it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of Photoshop knowledge to be able to get them at a high level like these are. And the cost versus time thing, it just doesn't add up. You could spend multiple hours even an entire day creating just one of these mock-up templates. I'm not kidding, it takes that long. Or you could spend a little tiny bit of money and get to work right away and the return on your investment is gonna come back almost immediately. So it's a much smarter move. Anyway, so we've typed in t-shirt mock-up and you can see there's all kinds of stuff to choose from here. Now, if you're looking to only spend a little bit of money, I'm gonna go ahead and direct you towards this one for 15 bucks. I've used this one before. It works fantastic, and I've linked it down in the description below for you. If you're looking to spend a little bit more, this is what I use in my shop now. It's this one right here for 70 bucks. The amount of value you get out of this thing for 70 bucks is absolutely insane. Like the people who are selling this for only that much money gotta be out of their minds because there's seriously like seven, $8,000 worth of mockups in this bundle. And I'm not shitting you, it's crazy. There are thousands of them inside of this package. And I know how this is already coming across. No, I'm not sponsored by these people. I honestly have zero idea who they are, but I bought this kit a long time ago when I was kind of struggling coming up and dude, the return on my investment was crazy. I've made so much money off of owning this kit now that just, Trust me, if you can hack it, this is the way to go. I mean, you can see this thing's got a ton of different mock-ups in it, but the coolest thing about this pack is these mock-up templates are made with the actual shirts that you would buy. Like, look at this list, Anvil, AS Color, Bella Canvas, all this stuff. It's all the actual shirts, the actual models that you would use for your clothing brand or sell to your customers. So you can make your mock-ups to the exact spec that you would see in real life later on down the road. Each different shirt, hoodie, jacket, whatever you're using has front and back views. And there's also three or four different angles of each of those views as well in there, which makes this thing extremely versatile. And they also update it very regularly. It seems like every couple weeks or once a month, they're adding a bunch of new stuff to it and you don't have to pay for it. You buy this thing once and all the updates come for free forever. So. I bought this thing four years ago for 70 bucks and I've probably gotten like two or 300 new mock-ups since then. So again, if you can add this one to your collection, don't hesitate, just do it. I've linked it in the description below for you. It's amazing. All right, so we got Photoshop open now and we've got one of these templates opened up. This is a template for a Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirt. This is the t-shirt that I use for my clothing brand probably 90% of the time. So we're gonna get a pretty accurate representation of what the real life thing is gonna be. So let's run through the basics really quick. It doesn't matter if you're using this exact template or if you're using a different one that you got, they're all gonna be very similar. Their layout is gonna be the same and the same steps are gonna apply. So. We've got our design layer here on top. That's pretty self-explanatory. We've got a layer for our tag so we can get rid of that thing if we want to. There's also a layer for a custom tag. We're gonna come back and mess with that later for sure. Um, we've got a folder here containing all of our textures, our highlights, our shadows. There's also another artwork layer which is just linked to the original artwork layer. But we're gonna come back and mess with that too. The highlights layer definitely we're messing with. Um, the fabrics. Click on that and you can see here we can change the shirt color to whatever we want really really quickly really really easily And the cool thing again about this template pack is it actually comes with the legit shirt colors for that brand So if we're gonna use say a Bella and canvas whatever color they have that season It's gonna be in there and you're gonna be able to match it exactly So that's pretty cool or you can just freestyle it using the color picker like so and then the last couple layers here is just the shadows so There's like a shadow you can see 
Yeah, you can hardly see it. There's a shadow, kind of a drop shadow behind the t-shirt. And then there is the background layer, the same thing. You can double click on that thing and we can change the background color to whatever we want. We're gonna leave it white because I generally don't use the background layer at all later on down the road and you'll see why. All right, so let's start making a shirt here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna double click the design layer. This brings us into a smart object. So that means it just opens up a different window. You can see there's the stock design. Here's a little placement guide. This is a really cool thing about this pack. So it makes this a whole lot easier. Um, we're gonna delete the stock design because that thing sucks. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna open up Adobe Illustrator here and I'm just gonna copy and paste a design over into Photoshop. Boom, and I'm gonna scale this thing accordingly. You kinda just gotta do a little bit of guesswork here. Some eyeballing work. So this looks about right for a chest print. We're gonna do a left chest print and a back print on this shirt design. So yeah, that looks about right. I'm gonna kinda shift this thing around using the arrow keys to get the placement exactly where I want it. And I think that's looking pretty good right there. Um, so that's pretty much it. We just gotta make sure we hide the placement guide now and the way smart objects work is you have to save it for it to show back up in the other window so i'm just gonna hit command and s and that will save it real quick we can close this thing out now and boom there we go there's our front design laid out on the shirt so from this distance you can't really tell what's actually going on with this thing it probably just looks like i placed a design on top of a photo of a shirt and you're thinking why the hell would i pay any money for that but when we zoom in on this thing really really tight you can see now there is shirt texture in our design you can see it's blending in with the shirt this looks like it was screen printed now it looks like a discharge print to me and that's what those added layers are doing the highlights layer the shadows layer the displacement maps behind the scenes they're giving it that realism These these type of flat lay photos aren't the best representation of this because there's really no dimension in these things. So I actually made another mock-up using one of their hanging templates here, and this is where you can see the realism. You can see this thing's got wrinkles in it, right? And if we zoom in on it, you can see this design, these leaves aren't curled in, in the design. These things are flat and straight. They are now curling up and around those wrinkles of the shirt, giving you that realistic look. Well, let's continue onward here. I'm gonna go back to my original shirt we're working on, and we're gonna do some tweaking. We're gonna open up that textures folder, like I said earlier, and we're gonna mess with the highlights. This is something that basically every mock-up in existence has in common, is that the highlights layer is always overpowering. It's always way too crazy. I don't know, it's just it's just the way they're made. I've made a bunch myself and they turned out the same way. I'm not sure exactly what the phenomenon is called, but for some reason, the highlights layer always blows out dark colors. It's always just way too much. This shirt, you know, is black. It doesn't really look black to me. This shirt looks like, well, it's black, but it looks like it's been washed about 4,000 times so we're just gonna go and click that highlights layer and go up to our opacity little slider here and we're just gonna turn that down a little bit just to kind of give this a more of a new shirt look I think I'm gonna turn it down to like 70% and that looks a lot better maybe we can go down let's go to like 68 cool now that looks a lot more like a new shirt to me that's much much nicer and you can see too when we zoom back in we still have all of our texture and stuff in the design. It doesn't really mess with that too much. Almost there. We just got a couple more things to do. I'm gonna get rid of this Bella Canvas tag because we're making pro shirts and pro shirts don't have manufacturer tags. We want our own tag in there. So I'm gonna turn on the custom tag layer and I'm gonna click and open that folder and double click this one here that says custom tag design. This is gonna open up another smart object window, kind of like the main design thing did earlier. And I'm gonna copy and paste my tag design into here. Boom. And we're gonna get rid of the design that came in there. And we're definitely gonna have to do some tweaking to this because it's covering like every bit of real estate inside this window. And I know that's gonna cause problems because of the way the original tag looked. So I'm actually gonna save this and let's go back and look at it and see what we gotta do. So yeah, you can see we got most of the top side of the design is getting cut off by the color here. And it's just way too big. Yeah, this is this is wrong in pretty much every way. So let's go back into that layer and I'm gonna hit Command T to resize it. And I'm gonna hold the option key here and I'm just gonna drag it down. That's gonna like scale it down to the center. And probably like there I would imagine is pretty good. I'm gonna bring it down all the way to the bottom as well just cause this tag covers a ton of vertical real estate. So and we don't want it to go back into that collar again. So that looks pretty good. Let's Command S and save it. Go back in there, and yeah, that looks really good. We can actually, let's scale it back up a little bit. Because I feel like in real life, it's gonna definitely be a little bit bigger than that. We got a little bit extra room to play with, so. 
let's put it like there and that should probably be good yeah there we go that's perfect now so that's it that's the front side of our shirt done dialed it's looking good we're gonna do the back side of the shirt now which is basically the same process over again but if you're a brand new total beginner to Photoshop and maybe I'm moving a little bit too fast for you, then now would be a good time to mention our video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of killer classes to help you learn all kinds of creative skills. Obviously, we're working in Photoshop here today and they happen to have an insane amount of classes covering pretty much every possible topic you could wanna know in Photoshop, ranging from the total beginner to the experienced pro. If you're a beginner to intermediate level at Photoshop, then I highly recommend this course by Daniel Scott. I took this thing a very long time ago and and it really helped me hit the ground running when it came time to do this as a business. And since they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away a free trial membership to the first 1,000 of you guys who join up using the link down in the description below. So make sure to check that out. I can't recommend it enough. It has helped me greatly in this business. All right, sponsorship stuff's out of the way. Let's continue on. We're here. So let's open up the back view of our shirt. And we're basically going to repeat the process over again, but I'm going to move a little bit faster this time because we already kind of did it. So we're gonna open up our design layer, double click that thing to open the smart object. Let's delete that stock design out of there and turn our placement guide on. And I'm gonna go into Adobe Illustrator here and copy my design, so Command C. And we're gonna paste it in there with Command V. Let's scale it down. Now, this design is probably the worst possible color for this placement guide because I can't see shit right now. So I'm just gonna use the outer box to kinda figure out where I'm at. Um, so that looks pretty good on width. Typically like a design like this would be anywhere between 12 to 14 inches wide on a adult sized shirt. So uh, I typically run like 12, 13 range. So that looks about right to me. And it would normally be about four inches down from the collar. So I think we're a little bit high here. I'm gonna pull it down to like there and kind of center it up. That looks pretty good to me. So. Let's turn off our placement guide, command S to save. Close that window. Boom, there it is, nailed it on the first shot. And that looks really good. Um, and again, we gotta turn down that highlight layer. So let's click on that and turn it down to, I think we did 68% on the front view. So yeah, yeah, that looks good. And that's it, that's the back of our shirt done. So from here, you have two options. The first is you could be done. You could export this as a JPEG and start laying out your clothing brand collection or send this off to a client, whatever. Or you could go one step further and make like a nice backdrop to put these things on, something branded, something that's gonna be like a nice presentation to your client or just to yourself. And that's the way we do things around here because you know, we are who we are. So we're gonna make one of those real quick. Okay, so I've got a new window opened up in Photoshop. This is actually a template that I made a little while back just to speed this process up a little bit. We've got different layers for stuff. We've got a layer with the text. We've got a layer with the shapes, which are just these little lines right here. And we've got a layer with the background so that we can quickly change the text if we have to, quickly change the colors of stuff, all that. And we'll get to that in a minute. But we wanna start off by going over to the front side of our shirt here and we wanna create a new merged layer. The reason why we wanna create a new merged layer here is because we've got 10 plus layers of stuff going on in here. And if we try to move all this over to that background the way that it is, that stuff is not gonna stay lined up and it's also gonna be a massive pain in the ass to try and resize things, move them around, all that. How to do that is, uh, well, first we're gonna turn off the background layers real quick because we don't wanna bring those over there. So let's turn that off. Let's turn off that shadows layer. And uh, we wanna bring over just this image of the shirt. So we're gonna go up to the very top layer here, the design layer, and we're gonna go down to the very bottom, which is the last available layer is the shirt color layer. Hold shift and click, and that selects all the available layers that we have here. And you're gonna hit Option, Command, and E. I believe it's Alt, Control, E on a PC. And uh, yeah, so that creates a new layer over top of everything with everything all flattened out into one image, which is gonna make our lives much easier to deal with. And we're just gonna drag this straight over into our template right now. And obviously it's way too huge, so let's bring that down to like, I don't know, 5.5 inches tall for now. Yeah, good enough. So we're gonna do the same thing of the back image of our shirt. Let's turn off these background layers, turn off the shadows, grab our bottom layer, grab our top layer, hold shift, option command E, boom. And let's drag that over to our backdrop. Cool, same thing, it's way too huge. And let's just kind of position these things half-assed for now because we're gonna add some more stuff into here. So I'm gonna go back over to Illustrator real quick and grab my little 
little template here for the swatches. This is something that we add into all of our presentations, whether it's a logo presentation, mock-ups, whatever, to show the Pantones that this thing is made of to the client. So I preset this thing up for, for this use today. We've got our two Pantone colors in there and the shirt color at the very end. So I'm gonna grab that, copy that over. And let's get that kind of sized accordingly. Which probably uh, right around there looks pretty good to me. Let's find the center. Oh, right there, perfect. Sweet. Let's start dialing in this text because, yeah, that's looking gross. So well, let's start off with the shape layer. This, these little lines. I think those should be the gold color of the shirt. So let's go to our color libraries. Make sure it's the same Pantone. Probably the eyedropper will grab it. Yep, seven five six two, right on the money. And we'll do the same with the text and get this kind of cream stone-ish color we got going on here. Oh, that eyedropper is just nailing it today. So that already looks a lot better. I still have to position and scale these shirts around a bit, but I, I want to deal with the background first. So yeah, we need to fill that up with something that's boring back there. So I'm going to grab the, uh, grab just the Rogue logo and put it back there. Really huge, I think. And let's go ahead and paste that into our background layer. And let's just blow that up massive, like right around there, because I don't want to interfere with those little golden lines. So that's cool. And let's turn the opacity way down, like 13, yeah, 13%, right on the money. That looks great. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. Just got to get these shirts sized and positioned right and we're done so i think they're a little bit small right now so i'm just going to go and change those to six inches tall rather than five and a half and let's get them kind of centered up between all this stuff so right there looks really good to me let's actually bring this out a little bit and right around there yeah, I'm good with that. So that's it. We created a super clean professional level mock-up here. Of course, we went a few steps further and created our own little backdrop to put it onto, just in case we're gonna send this out to a client for approval and really want to impress them. And actually, this is what I would send to a client if we were doing a one design type of shirt like this and there's really not a whole lot involved. It would be visually pretty much the same thing. The only things I would add in there is usually the shirt model that we're gonna use and the size breakdown, just so that they sign off on everything and everyone's on the same page. But Otherwise, this is most of the way there. If I was printing a whole collection for somebody, however, then that's a whole other thing. It's way crazier, much more pro looking. Maybe I'll show you guys that thing one day. Maybe not, maybe I wanna keep some stuff to myself. I can tell you it's really badass though. But as for making the actual mock-ups, as you saw, it's incredibly easy to do and it doesn't matter whether you're making a t-shirt mock-up, you're making a hoodie mock-up, a hat, or a friggin' beer bottle. It really doesn't matter. These skills that you learned here today will carry forward with you. That's it, you guys. Please, if you learned something here today, hit the thumbs up button for me. It really helps get these things out to more people. If you have any questions, drop a comment for me down below. I'll be answering all those as per usual. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again in the next one.